I was a school teacher in England, and then a friend of mine, a writer, said, go and get some training. So I went to a school in Paris, in France, and there I trained to be an actor. I became an actor, and then I went back to the school, Ecole Jacques Lecoq, and became a teacher there. And I was a teacher with Jacques Lecoq for 20 years. I work around Europe, North and South America, and at the moment also I am a teacher in a school in Brussels, Ecole Lassade. Lassade and I were colleagues in Paris in the early 80s. And I work with Eric Amelin and have worked with Eric Amelin for a good few years, Muller's Freunde. I have done quite a few projects, artistic projects, theatre projects, and pedagogical projects with Eric. And we have a new project for you. The project is an extensive period of artistic training for artists and actors, especially actors who are destined for physical theatre. That's what we call, we call it physical theatre. All theatre is physical. Even if there's nothing in the space, the space is never empty. But we term it physical theatre, and that's the objective of this training. There will be a series of modules, a series of workshops. Each workshop will have its title, its objectives, its time, its preparation for the participants, and the presentations at the end of each module. first module will be a more general module, entire of itself. The title is The Art of Movement for the Craft of the Actor. And in it, the participants will be able to have a very clear idea of the whole process and the pedagogical approach which I will lead. Our movement is everywhere. You cannot not move. You cannot be silent. Stillness and silence do not exist. Uh, you, as an artist, as an actor, as a musician, as a conductor of an orchestra, as a filmmaker, as a sculptor, as a painter, you must create stillness and silence. If not, nobody will watch what you're doing and nobody will hear what you say. This first general workshop will give us tools to take movements and see how these movements can be of use to the actor. Then the project, the long-term project, the extensive project will start. The first module of the project will be playing and acting. We always play. Human beings are only human when they, sorry, when we play. And we always play according to the rules of the game. What is play? What is play? Here is a door and a door handle. Ah, there's too much play. Someone must come and repair that. Play is a freedom of movement which means nothing and which can be dangerous. We play all the time. How does play become active? How can we nurture the sense of play for the actor to act? We will explore natural movements of the human body and see how they can nurture creation of character, space, tempo, rhythm to put on stage. That's the first module of the project. Then we come on to the mask. One module on the mask. The mask termed the neutral mask or the mask of reference. It is the reference for everyone we want to be 
and for everything we want to do in our lives, the reference. When you touch this neutral mask, then you have a constant reference for everything you do. As the great man said once, do like everybody else, and if you're different, ah, we'll see it. And you know, in life, a lot of people want to be different, and you have everybody wanting to be different, and they dress differently, and they're all the same. If you try to be different, you're the same as everybody else. But if you touch where we are united, where we are together, then you will see how different you are. Mime is what unites everybody and where nothing is missing. Ah, when you are facing the ocean, you are different from when you are walking through a forest in the big trees. You are different. This is mime, the most sensitive plant, mimosa. Mime is not a guessing game, absolutely not. It is the sense of life of being human in our world. Then we move on to the elements and the materials. The mask, the neutral mask, will go on a journey through nature before going on a journey through human nature. Ah yes, we will explore the four elements. Now, the four elements, I think, have existed from time immemorial. You find references to the four elements thousands of years ago. They are still with us. What can they bring us in terms of movement, character, space, rhythm, time? And we also work and live in a world where there is different materials. Well. We put things in paper bags and then you screw it up and throw it away. But the paper bag wants to get back to its initial form, its initial shape, its initial texture, and it always moves. What do we do? Hear it? There are some people say is a more abstract world, light, colour, paintings. Well, light. If we don't have light, we don't understand it. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? If we don't have light, we don't understand. We don't see. Ah, isn't it fantastic? We see. Ah, yes, I see now. Ah, yes, I see. Ah, yeah, je vois in French. <laughs> right? Light. So is sunlight the same as moonlight? If you see sunlight shining on the Mediterranean Sea, is it the same as moonlight shining on the Norwegian snow? Uh-uh. There are different natural lights. You see glow worms? Uh -uh. The idea is not how do glow worms move, but how does the light move? How does sunlight move? How does moonlight move? The starlight. And the, the moonlight in Juliet's eyes that Romeo sees and that moves him. Can we move light so that light moves us? 
Light makes colors live for us. There are different colors. We have the rainbow. We know what the rainbow is. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. How does each color move? How do these colors interact? How does Van Gogh? How does Van Gogh use blue? Oh, yeah. oh Rothko. He uses blue too. There are some good reproductions, aren't there? And there are some good museums. In Vienna, there's a great one. We can see the originals. There are good reproductions available to us. If we have to explore the world of a painter, his world or her world, how do we go about it? We look at colour, we look at how they use the colour, we look at how they put the colours and the forms in a painting, and how these forms, the colours, the lights react and create the world. The person, Van Gogh, perhaps was not very happy, but his paintings are glorious, glorious. We look at the paintings. We stay in what some people call is abstract with poetry and music. All the rhythms of life are in music and the sense of life is in poetry. We look at the different rhythms, you know, Fred Astaire, Stevie Wonder, Dave Brubeck, great rhythms. Can you do them? And there are some great musicians. Eric Satie, every note that he wrote has his signature. You can listen to one note sometimes of Eric Satie, and you know it's him, it's Debussy. Copland, Barber, you can name many, many composers. What was the world that they were expressing? What is the world within their music? What can we bring to that world, and what can that world bring to us? Still abstract, they say. But you look at people walking down the street, each person has his or her rhythm. From the abstract world, we have to come back up into our world, and we'll do that with animals. Now, when you see human beings in everyday life, most often you can say, ah, there's one animal which is predominant. If you look at people at the railway station or the airport and they look a little bit worried about their flight, go and check them. We see the fly, the house fly, coming into its glory. If you see young children who want to play, <laughs> what do we see? You go to the supermarket, you go to the cash desk, and you see older ladies looking for their coins. And you often see something resembling a chicken. They don't panic, well not visibly anyway. Some people, when they're talking, we're on the safari, and some people are giraffes, some people are camels. We are all animals. When we imitate, or human beings, we, human, you see human beings imitating an animal, and they always criticize the animal. <laughs> Look! <laughs> what are we afraid of? Afraid of the animals? If we are afraid of animals, we're afraid of ourselves. I wonder why. The world of animals, endless. In June, the final session, the final workshop, will be how can we present what we've done in the past to a public. And you know, in January, There'll be a great moment.
when someone did something fantastic. And in February, oh, do you remember when you did that? Oh, that dance you did in April, that was good. How do we take these moments that we created, how do we work them so that they can go in front of a public, in front of an audience? What is the process from being taught something, learning, and then performing it? What's that process? It's not easy, but that's what we'll do. The objective is a show. It's very difficult, that objective. There might be a sort of an open class, sort of open class, which we will have to rehearse, but there will surely be something to show. It's a pretty good project, you know. Eric, Petra, Helga, and me, we work a lot on this, you know. It's a good one. Give it a try. See you.